So my uh, snow blower, the one I have kept, once in a while the dogs don't catch on the rewind and it just pulls, you know. So I went into my shed and I found this one. And then it says one dog missing. So when, when you when you turn it, when you turn it, there's one dog missing. So all I'm gonna do with this guy is keep the rope and chuck it. I'm I'm getting I'm starting to every time I whoops, I'm sorry, every time I come across a a crummy used part now, it gets thrown away. And I've got a, pardon me, hello on that, turn on a light too, right? Eh? And I've got just a nice little small pail there for metal, and then when it gets full, I just take it out. So we'll just tie a nice little knot in this. We'll keep the rope. Absolutely nothing wrong with the rope, except it's a bit short. So this one I brought out. It's got lots of length, because it's a snowblower, right? And uh, it's got two dogs, two dog night, three dog night. See the dogs pop out there. So I'm going to try that on my snowblower. And we'll see how it goes. Moving on. So I'm going to really concentrate on every time I go through all my used parts now. If there's something that's no good, recycle bin. Thanks a lot. Hey guys, Bruce here. Well, we're going to continue on with that rewind for my snowblower, the little Craftsman 5 horse to come see. It's older. That's the, that's the uh, snowblower that came in with the broken case. The gentleman that owned it before me many years ago put all of the shear pins into the auger systems as grade 8 bolts and it just split the transmission. And funny, it didn't it didn't uh, take the uh, flywheel key pin out or nothing. So that we can get at this and weld this up. I actually think it's okay. I checked the gears out like crazy, right? So I got this. And it's a good one. It's got more than uh, got more than enough reach. And we'll get the snowblower. I'm not sure no it's only got the two bolts but what's happening and you can see this from this side sorry okay let's just uh, change what we're doing here looking down that should do it right and when I pull the cord doesn't grab. Oh, well, now it does, of course. There, now it's not grabbing. As soon as you heard that clunk, see that? But if you grab it quick, it does grab. So, believe it or not, it's only two quarter inch. Uh, little tiny bolts that hold that on there. One is there. One is over there. There might be four on here. Yes, there's there's four on here, which is telling me there's an issue because they usually only have two on them. So let me get my act together. I, might, I think I can. Can I get that bottom one out of there? Let's just do this. You guys can watch. I wonder. Oh yes, I wonder. One quarter. Let's get you on the chair. Okay. So the first bolt is right nut or bolt, I guess what you might call. It. You'll see when I take it out. It. Uh, this one has three in it for some reason. Probably because I had trouble with it when I first built the darn thing, right? I actually built this thing. If I'll show you the welds on it maybe later, or if I'm really good, I'll bring up the old video and put that as a link. 
So anyway, let's get that little tiny quarter inch bolt off there. I don't think I can do it with this. So we're going to have to do it with a quarter inch turn at a time. Let's get a shorter wrench. So you guys have seen my wrenches up on the wall. I'll go slow. All of those wrenches, they're all just 20% shorter than the standard wrenches. Like, look at maybe even more. So with this short wrench, you can get a longer throw when you're taking out a, a nut or a bolt, right? It's starting to come to my finger now. Now I'll drop it. Yay! And this is important. Do you see this, this nut here? So just a quarter inch nut on the end. But do you see the end here? It's pointy. So it almost makes its own thread the first time it's inserted, eh? Now this one might go with the ratchet wrench. Nope. Dirty dog. But I can use now quarter inch, one quarter. I can use this. Now on this particular setup, I don't think, I know I'm, I'm rambling, right? That's what I do, I ramble. Oh, this one will work too. Now there may not be anything wrong with this rewind, it might be the cup that mounts on the, uh, ouch, that mounts, uh, it's coming. The cup that the dogs go into, I'll show you that in just a minute, it's on the flywheel. Got it. Woohoo! So there's three in there, that's really weird. I must have stripped one when I built it, eh? No. Okay, look at one of these. It's not coming out. One of these things is like the other. One of these things are kind of the same. So when I pull this, you'll see that the, that one here sticks out a little further than that one. And this one has a, has a lawnmower uh, handle, bar holder, rope holder. But I guarantee you, the same make. So come with me over to the vise. Well, you can almost see that. Eh? We're going to just take this guy off of here. It's pinching the rope. Eh? Don't. This, this is called working smart. Good. Now, what this is not going to have is that uh, beautiful snow blower pull that you can use with a mitten or a big glove. But if this works, I'm going to just change it out. Okay. Back on the blower. Okay. Now I want to pull it at about that angle. Good. And we'll get our... I just want to put in two to see if that works. But if it strips, I can't do that, right? Excellent. Now this one, I might be able to do it with a small quarter inch ratchet. 
Mastercraft. So we'll take this socket and that ratchet and we'll go clockwise, maybe. Now well, a really expensive ratchet would return that way without me having to hold it. There we go. Usually only you need two of these. Good. Now I'm going to pull it. We'll come back. So you still might have missed it because it was behind that. I put that guy on right there. So now I've only got two on there, and normally the Tecumseh Rewinds are held on with two, not three or four, but two of those bolts. Good. So now I'm going to take about six inches off of this and put on the snowblower attachment. We have a snow blower ready to be started. All right. So we turn it on. We pump it till we have a leak. There it's leaking. Full chunk. Even though it was tilted on its nose, I bet you it starts. Let's just back you up a little further so you can get the full, the full meaning here. Light camera. Whee! Action! I bet you I can do this with my right arm in one pull. Yes. So, this, this snow blower has been completely apart. I don't even know if I can show you the welds anymore. I sold my John Deere snow blower and kept this one because it's just so easy and wonderful to operate. But if you look right there, you also have to remove the motor from the transmission housing, which is the main body, so that we can get at this and weld this up. I actually think it's okay. I checked the gears out. You guys saw the beginning of that other video. So now I'm just going to uh, go slow and uh, I think I'll take the motor off first while I still have the stability of the auger housing. Uh, now. Yep, there it is, it's out. Now how heavy is this bad boy? Use this as a handle, maybe. Not bad. I'm gonna need as much, much, much access to that as possible. I'll be right back. That was a movie producer. I got that from Road King. I have to weld that back in there. Oh, and this tack broke here and that tack broke there. So we're going to learn a lot here in the next little while. Yes. Are you seeing that? So this is this has come off. 
right? There and there. We can squeeze that together and weld it first, I think. And we'll get this cap off the top. And then there's a big split down the side and some other minor ones. So we got some welding to do, but most of it's going to be from the top. Cool! There's a weld all the way from there, all the way across. And under the drain, there's a weld. That whole case was split apart. Even here. Good. Now I can take this off of here. I can pull that out. I can make a nice double knot. Right? A little bit bigger knot. Craziness, eh? And I just keep this little guy. I service it once a year. Uh, and, you know, go through the paces with it. And uh, put it away for the summer and bring it out in the fall and away I go. And you saw it started on one pole after sitting vertically like, like, well, you know what I mean, sitting on its nose. Let's do it. Sitting like that. That's how you service snowblowers is on the nose. Let's do it. That's how you service a snowblower. That's how you get into the, the gearbox. That's how you, uh, you can tighten the drive cables if required. Now a good drive cable, that's perfect. It's just, it's got no slack on it, but it's ready to be tightened. And when I squeeze this handle, that tightens and activates the rear wheel drive. And this other one activates the auger. This one here there, down that, to here. And that activates the auger. And then everything else is on the front. So yeah, there we go. I'm gonna just put this guy back down. Right arm, because I'm, just because. And let's just start it one more time to make sure this pull rope is viable. I don't know if I'll need a choke this time. Let's put a little choke on. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, it's got too much rope on it. Did I get you? Sorry about that. Look at that dirty dog. Six, let's just check to see how, how long the old one was. No, I'm not putting the old one back on just yet. I'm going to take this one down to five feet. And I'm just going to see if it retracts a little, six feet. Let's see if it retracts a little better. Seventy-two inches, right? So we'll go and cut it at seventy-four, so I can make a knot. Good. Don't let go. This is the handle. I just cut it off the other one, and we'll get a lighter. Let's just do a slip knot for a minute here. Hey, only when you're on camera, right? Alright, nothing's ever as simple as you would think 
because it's old stuff. It's, everything's old. I know what I can do. I'll just push that down a little bit more, a little bit more. And I'm going to take this over to the vise. Nothing's easy, guys. There. I'm going to turn around. Are you with me on the vise? And I'm just going to put this in the vise and pull it. Oh, I'm going to put it in tighter than that. Don't know my own strength. Let's go this way so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, I just put my ropes in the vise. And I give them a little extra tug, right? And we might even trim it up. And burn the end again. Good. Into the handle. Undo my vice grip. Turn you around. Get you to look down. Almost. Almost there, right? And into the receiver. Perfect. Now we can put that away. It is a slightly different rewind. This one has a bigger cup for the for the for the big handle. That's not going to hurt anybody. So now I'm going to put that other handle on here. But you don't have to see that. Thanks again for watching. I think we're there. One more what do you call that? Functional test. Probably don't need a choke now, do we? No, we do. What happens is with snow blowers, they have the nice electric start on them. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. I guess I could show you that too. Uh, but they're AC electric start, so you need an, uh, an extension cord. And then if you don't have that and you're a block up doing, you know, your aunt's or your friend's sidewalks, and the snow blower quits, you can still pull the rope now. That's what that's about. And the other one still worked, but it had a one cog knot catching, right? So I let. I'm not going to show off the electric start. You just plug it into here and hit the button. Or should we? Yay! Let's do it! So now we're not using the hand starter, we're using the uh, electric starter. Three quarters, so a tiny bit of choke. And you can see, kind of not really. Yeah, that's about as close as you can get. Now, to end this off, yes, you could have a 12 volt battery with a 12 volt starter on these, but uh, then you need to have a stator inside the machine to charge the battery and all that stuff. Or this way, an AC starter is the way to go. They've been doing this since the early 70s and, and before, probably. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys. You saw it first here on Bruce Pinner TV. <laughs> anyway, thanks. Bye. All right. Hi, guys. Bruce here. 
excuse the furnace and uh, the lighting interferes a bit but not bad so I got a I got a note in the mail so let's just find out what it is let's just get a tool of some kind to open this up I'll take my favorite screwdriver I think I know who it's from <laughs> The card is to protect the sticker. <laughs> there it is. Guys playing with tools. And uh, his name's Bill. And when I first heard, the, excuse me, when I first heard this guy's channel name a few years ago, I thought it was guys playing with tool. <laughs> so anyway. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna turn the camera off. I'm gonna clean off a space on my on my wall and we'll get this up. I'll be right back. I'm back. Okay, I got as much grease off this off this wall as I could. There's my there's my wall of stickers. A couple there's there's from uh, donut times back there somewhere behind my light. We're running out of Available room. I don't want to go too low because that's where all the scratching happens when a motor starts up, right? But I got a good spot for you, Bill. I'm just trying to figure out how to get the how to how to get it off. Maybe I have to cut it out. I do. I think I have to cut it out. Well, we can do that. Hang on. Tell me if I'm doing this wrong, Bill. If I cut it perfect or not? Here we are. Now. Oh, I always leave my my glasses in the house when this kind of thing happens, eh? I did it! How about that, Bill? Okay. Heads up. Over. Light. Can I get you there, Bill? I want to put you up higher so you don't get damaged. Can I, let's put you right... Oh, there we go. Did I just changed the, the dang. Oh, I guess that's it. <laughs> we got you up there. A little bubble there. There we go. You're up there with some pretty good people. Thanks a lot.